This is Governor Larry Hogan, and I don't always have time to listen to podcasts, but uh, I do enjoy listening to the Maryland Crabs podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Fernay, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. It's the Maryland Krebs. Notice anything different about me? That's right. I'm not tweeting anymore. I'm off Twitter. I've gone cold turkey, my friends. Well, that's kind of a lie. I have not gone cold turkey. My brother and I had a long discussion. He lives up in Manhattan a few months ago, and he had given up social media a year ago, and he said, not that he was that big into it anyway, but he just said, I had to give it up because it was just crap. I just didn't enjoy it. It just made me feel lousy, made me feel dirty, like I was eating junk food, and I had nothing to show for it at the end. I said, no, no, it's a valuable tool. I said, you get to keep up with your friends and relatives, and on Twitter, I follow all sorts of news and people I love, and he goes, yeah, but... Do you feel any better? I mean, is it actually bringing anything positive to your life? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And then I had to think about it. And the last few months, it has not brought positivity to my life. Uh, Facebook sucks anyway. And everyone, including you, are lying on Facebook. Your life is not that perfect. So stop lying. Twitter, on the other hand, I was a Twitter junkie. And I used it to follow politics and news and business trends and sports. And that's where I got all my information. And I followed a bunch of people who are comedians and funny comedic writers and all that sort of thing. And they were hilarious for years and years. And over the last year, for obvious reasons, everyone just got so bitter and angry all the time that I was just like, God, what nasty, bitter, ugly people. And you guys used to make me laugh. And then I looked at my own Twitter feed and I'm like, yeah, I suck too. So I gave it up. And I went to Twitter and I went to settings and I deleted my account and it said, great. You can delete your account in 30 days. So everything's offline, but it's sitting back in the background like a fat pigeon that if I ever want it again in the next 10 days now, I can just reactivate it and I'm back on, which would suck for everybody, frankly. So I'm trying to be strong. But in the meantime, I do cheat, like I mentioned, is that I will use the Maryland Crabs Twitter account and then I will go to the trends, what's trending for the day. And that changes throughout the day for those of you who use Twitter. And it tells you all the biggest stories that are happening. But even when I do that, I find out that I, it makes me just as angry as if I have my own account. So I've got to figure that part out. So I've been trying to be better about that until I got a text a couple days from John. And yeah, texts from John often vex me. But this one was kind of funny, actually. And he said, you've got to check out this Twitter account. And I said, well, John, you know I'm off Twitter. And he goes, yeah, okay. And so I said, okay, what is it? And he said, it's Jimmy's Famous Seafood in Baltimore. And I'd heard of them. They're they're an iconic seafood restaurant up in Baltimore. So I went to the account. And actually, I knew that there was an issue with PETA because it was on Reddit the day before. And it was the big billboard that PETA put on trying to convince everybody in Baltimore to be vegans and to stop eating crabs. And sure enough, arguably one of the most iconic seafood restaurants in Baltimore decided to take on PETA on Twitter. And it was hilarious. And it was funny. They were scathing. They were irreverent. And it looked a lot of fun for the social media manager to just be kind of let loose and and kind of go after someone that they thought was attacking them. So it was kind of fun. But then actually it became a national story. And John said, well, we're right here. Why don't we call them up and see if they'll talk to us? And we called them up. And sure enough, they said they'd talk to us. So we zipped up today. And we met with John Minidakis, who is the president of Jimmy's Famous Seafood. And he's one of three brothers who are the owners and run the restaurant. And they have run the place since their father passed away, I think he said 15 years ago. And when they were 17, 19, and 20, and when they took over the restaurant. And he was a lot of fun. And he, he, was, he was a blast. And my favorite part of the interview was when John mentioned casually that he didn't eat seafood. And John Minidakis' eyes just kind of narrowed a little bit. And John didn't catch it. A lot of Johns in this story. But it was fun, and while we were there, it was wild to watch his phone just light up from the constant texts and emails that he was getting from all the media outlets around the country who wanted to talk to him while we were there. Fox News reached out to him because they wanted to talk to him. So he was very generous with us, gave us about 40 minutes of his time, and he's having a great time with us. 
It's definitely a restaurant that I'm going to go to in the future because I'd never been there before. It was it was right outside the Harbor Tunnel on the Baltimore side, and it was a phenomenal restaurant. It looked great. I'm going to go back without John because he doesn't eat seafood, as he mentioned. But it was a great time talking with John Minidakis about Jimmy's Famous Seafood's war with PETA, who is trying to turn us all vegan and give up our crabs. When you're a community bank, you help your community however you can. Like being there for local business people, backing them up when they start up, advising them when they ask, standing by them so they can grow. Helping local businesses is one of the most important things we do at Severn Bank. I'm Alan Hyatt, the chairman of the bank, but I'm also a proud supporter of businesses in Anne Arundel County. You know we never forget that here at the bank, we're a local business too. We face the same challenges and opportunities as any business, and we know how fortunate we are to have customers who stand beside us. That's why we stand beside you. If you have a business or you want to start a business, talk with us, because we're banking on you. Severn Bank, here with you. Online at SeverinBank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Severn Bank is a trade name used by Severn Savings Bank. If you don't like huge draft beer selections, don't go to Union Jacks. If you're not looking for an incredible menu and dozens of screens to catch your favorite teams, I repeat, do not go to Union Jacks. Not into darts and pool? Good. Live music not your thing? Perfect. Bottom line, if you are not interested in the best dining and bar experience in Annapolis, avoid Union Jacks. But if this all sounds totally friggin' awesome to you, visit Union Jacks in Annapolis, just across from Whole Foods in the Annapolis Town Center. Union Jacks, not your old-style pub. If you have not been following Jimmy's Famous Seafoods Twitter account over the last, I want to say two weeks since PETA put up their horrible billboard in Baltimore, you've totally been missing something, and we wanted to bring a little bit of that here to you. We're here up at Jimmy's Famous Seafood on Hollabird Avenue in Baltimore. Actually, we're kind of Dundalk with John Minica. He's this is right this is right exactly you why get, it's you, edited. You get five tries. It's okay. With John Minidakis. Did I get that right? That works, yes. Okay. Do. <laughs> Who is the owner, the Impressive, co-owner? John of Jimmy's Seafood, and I would have thought he might have been the face behind the snarky Twitter thing, but I'm learning that it's not quite the same thing. No, it's team. It's team effort. Uh, no one person takes the credit for that one. It's got to be unanimous. It's got to keep the tone. Got to keep it lighthearted. Oh, there's a tone, all right? Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, it's a it's a culmination, I guess, of a bunch of people. It's a team effort. You know, we, we preach the team mentality here, not only in the trenches, so to speak, in the kitchen and on the floor, but all through, also through our efforts in the community and obviously on social media as well. Well, as you guys have been around for a long time, okay, this is um, you've been around since 1974. Yes, yeah, so 44 years. Established by your father, mm-hmm. who immigrated from Greece. Yes, and now run by you and your brother. Yep, so it's a second generation family business uh, through and through, uh, pretty much as old school as it gets. Well, for those that aren't aware, it all started with PETA, and they put up a billboard down in Baltimore and said, I'm me, not meat, with a picture of a Chesapeake blue, Maryland blue crab, and said, see the individual, go vegan. You took opposition to that, <laughs> in, in a way. By the way, I would quit Twitter a couple weeks ago, and I made a big deal about it. And this actually pulled me back kind of onto Twitter just for you guys. But I've been fo- – you're the only Twitter account that I follow. That's funny because uh, we've seen a lot of these tweets come across the timeline. You know, I was off Twitter and I'm back now because of you or I created my account. It was the worst. Just was, for you. I, I, I went off Twitter because I'm like I'd had it. I've become obsessed and I was like just unhappy all the time. It really is a toxic Twitter. place. It though. is a toxic it place. Really is. And so John texts me as he often does. And he's like, have you seen this latest outrage? And I put something on Facebook about the billboard I'd seen the night before. And it was you guys in a tone that I love just attacking, which was – and it was funny too. It was – it was – my kind of humor because it was unapologetic. Yeah, well, you know, our backs were against the wall. You know, you got a multi-million dollar company coming in with a blank checkbook, and they've got a pretty good track record of putting, you know, numerous Americans out of business. Well, uh, you had something on there that I thought was good is because I was laughing because it was funny and it was unapologetic and I got rickrolled, all those sort of things. But then at one point, it was almost poignant where someone was who was on Peter's side said something and – your Twitter account was pretty much came out and said, hey, look, 
we're coming out against a company that's putting people out of work, out of people's livelihoods, you know, of state tradition, all of those things. And it was an honest moment. And I thought about it going, you know, they are. John said this before. I'm going to totally steal it from him. He said, he said that's like coming to Chicago. This, this is an <laughs> iconic. I mean, you're Lou Malnati out of Chicago. You're Pat or Gino, whichever way you want to look at it, <laughs> out, of, yeah. out, out of Philadelphia, Cafe du Monde. And they come in guns blazing. You know they that? do, and, and they've had you know a lot of success recently. Uh, most recently with the Nabisco crackers, you know they, they they caused the company to change their packaging. Oh yeah, oh, the that's, animal that's right. And the- yeah, but you know they've they've also we, we've had people emailing us from all over the country uh, who have been put out of work by them. And just really supporting us and throwing their love behind us, uh, former SeaWorld employees, uh, people that were in the Greyhound industry, uh, you name it, they've reached out to us. You know, the crab industry, I just felt uh, that's one that's really not, quote unquote, controversial at all. Uh, you know, crabs are harvested, as you know. It's Right. Well, they, they also tend to be in the uh, in the vegetarian diet as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the vegetarian light. Uh, you know, we took such a hit this year uh, locally uh, in the crab industry with uh, the crab picking plants. Right. They couldn't get the visitor. And I mean, it's the HB2 and visa. I, I wasn't going to sit on the sidelines uh, while we came under attack again. And well, Why was it you and not – Phillips or Brickies or Costas or any of the other restaurants that serve. Why do you think? Why? I mean, yeah, you know, ob- ob- obviously you've got a little bit of more of a <sighs> balls. Yeah, I've never heard of any of them, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's. I think people these days are just uh, very scared. They're scared to offend. Uh, well, because they're it's- walking that politically correct line. Even when the big bad wolves come and knock on your door, uh, you're still scared to fight back. And you know, I'm very disappointed in them whoever they are, uh, for not sticking up for themselves and their employees and the family that depend on them for their income. Well, it used to be that if you had a problem with a company of any kind, you wrote a letter to the president, and more often than not, it would it would hit the trash can or, or just go ignored. Then the internet back in the 90s where people could set up the websites and call out Microsoft or whoever it was, and, and they couldn't be silenced. Now with social media, you can have someone with 10, 15 followers who can put out a tweet or put out a Facebook post, and all of a sudden it does go viral. And I think a lot of companies are have their back to the wall because they're not sure how to handle that and there are very few companies like yours and this is why we're here and this is why i like this because you're a company that that didn't try to negotiate didn't try to backpedal didn't try to soften it and you're just like you know what f you this is what we serve this is this is who we are and and we're not going to back down i, yeah, I, I mean, like we, are, we don't cuss we won't use that exact verbiage but it's kind of implied sometimes but yeah it's you know we have that that spartan mentality here of never surrendering you know we've had the vegans come after our, our yelp pages and our google plus pages and leaving their one-star reviews which i guess is their modus operandi, but it's standard. Uh, I don't think they were coming in here anyways, so I'm not <laughs> too worried about them. Um, yeah, but you know, just I hate to harp on the fact too much. I just think that people are extremely frightened and scared of offending one person out of a hundred. In the in the meantime, it just causes them to you know crawl into their cubby hole and not come out. And this one tweet I actually kind of thought was hysterical. It was. Uh... I can't remember what she went on and on, but actually said, actually, they're attacking our industry, our livelihood and our ability to provide for our families. And part of your Twitter thing is you went back and you looked at the person's account that tweeted to you and <laughs> she had on a fairy costume in her profile. <laughs> and you're like, how'd you like it if a multi-million dollar company <laughs> waged an attack on grown women who still wear their fourth grade <laughs> Halloween costumes? <laughs> I love that. Uh, it, was, it was so mean. Which is – I tell the uh, I tell the guys and the girls to say – it's always funny when you have an animal or a cartoon as your picture. Was, you don't don't respond to them. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your energy. And it goes back to what you were saying earlier about uh, Twitter just being a toxic wasteland. Sometimes uh, people can be extremely anonymous on Twitter, and you never know. It could be one of your perceived best friends behind that account, and just unleashing their inner jealousy and, and hatred for you without you knowing it. Uh, which is why, you know, they say old people like Facebook better. You know, me personally, I like Facebook the best because you can't hide. Uh, I know who you are. I know your name. Right. And if you have something to say to me, you're going to do it uh, the old school way, face to face, through Facebook, obviously. But right. I know who you are. You know who I am. And let's get it out there. Let's figure this out. You know, well, and that's be, why I have a big problem with Yelp, frankly, is that, that yeah. you know, Yelp, if, if Yelp's you, a bully. I, I, I'm not a fan of Yelp. For uh, that yeah. You ever see the South Park episode about Yelp? No. That's the best episode ever. These people just take themselves too seriously on Yelp. Uh, my, my but pers- it's, a wep- it's weaponized now, and Yelp knows that. Yep. And, and they, and they want to, they want you to pay. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've dealt with Yelp on some businesses before, and and um, it's it's extortion. It really is. Word of mouth, I found, is still the number one form of advertising. Uh, Yelp, Google Plus, all that stuff that can go to the wayside. 
Uh, if you're going to depend on one of those websites, I definitely recommend using Open Table because those are diners that you know came in right. to the establishment. They're not fake people. They're not bots from Russia. <laughs> and, uh, right. and they're people that actually did have an experience with you. And, you know, you'll find that a lot of three-star very popular places on Yelp turn out to be five star places on Open Table. Well, there's a restaurant in Annapolis that is constantly responding and says, "Okay, our, our our meal was horrible, our service was horrible, whatever it was." And their constant response is, "That's not the service that we normally give." And mm-hmm. it is. And it is. I mean, <laughs> it, when everybody is saying that, mm-hmm. it, it is the service that you give, and you need to look at it. But uh, you're absolutely right. When you can qualify that it is somebody that is actually eaten here, you you've got to put a lot more stake into that. Plus, as I've well. seen I've gone to these businesses. Like you see the story, it starts on Facebook, then all of a sudden it creeps over to, to Twitter. And then, then the end result is Yelp is how the social justice warrior mentality is you're going to fight the battle there. So if you go and look at the Yelp reviews and it's like four and five star, and then all of a sudden for like three days, it's straight one star yeah. reviews, you know that that was a campaign. Yeah. And I don't trust well, it. Well, you've, no. you've taken a hit on some of your reviews, haven't you? I mean, I know yeah, that was, I mean, was, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't take a look at it, but I know a tweet you said, hey, keep, keep the two star reviews Yeah, coming. you know, we had probably 60 one star reviews on Yelp Friday, but... You know, we had our busiest Friday in years, so I mean, <laughs> keep those reviews coming in, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's that's outstanding. I had a but, friend of mine who was a comic in the 90s, and that's when – the late 90s when a lot of the boycotts were coming in from what some comics were saying. That was like uh, maybe the tail end of Andrew Dice Clay and, and this right before Sam days. Kinison died. Yeah. And, and I had a couple of them that were – they're just like, I just want to be boycotted or you know have some sort of protest. <laughs> that's yeah. the but at the time, it was good publicity for them. It was fantastic. You know? And the comedy now is just, uh, it's just so watered down because people are walking on eggshells. Well, you're not going to go to colleges. I mean that's that's – I know a lot of comics who, who won't touch colleges just for that reason. Yeah, and they, want, they want the phones at the door and yeah, they put them can't in the bags. them, you know. They're, I mean, that's an industry that's definitely taking a hurt with uh, the recent culture shift. Yeah, and, but there's very few people who are going to go ahead and take that that on. You know, the Me Too is a perfect example. Is uh, Last week, uh, Louis C.K. went back on stage after nine months of being off stage and it took a lot of flack on Twitter. That's mm-hmm. where the war was fought. Yeah, and, a bunch of eggs and cartoons yeah, exactly and- <laughs> yeah and that's i said that once i'm like i'm not arguing with an egg yeah. you know that's yeah you have three four yeah. followers that's just, rule number one don't talk to an egg no no eggs but there's very few people who are willing to kind of take on the critics right or wrong and i think you know first of all you're an icon so i think you you right away you're kind of starting at, at 50 yeah. so you can go ahead and step up and say you know what we're, we're not going to even talk about this or debate this is so ridiculous that we're going to make fun of it because mm-hmm. that's what it, that's what it is and that's John saying – so saying this when we were walking in going, what was the purpose of the uh, billboard? Because no one's going to be convinced of that. No one's going to look at that and all of a sudden go to vegan, which is a huge lifestyle change anyway. They and- just wanted to – I think – well, first of all, you know, as much as we laugh at it, they've had success with that sort of campaign in other places. I'll research them. So that's, you know, where it was a little scary, but – I also think they wanted to demonize the crab industry. So, you know, uh, a couple walking on the street all of a sudden may, might not go to the crab cake place. They might go to the pasta place instead that day because subconsciously it creeped into their mind. So, you know, we can laugh at it all we want, but uh, these people have, as I said earlier, just a bottomless budget. They do, and, and they've they, done and- their research and they know how to attack a person's mentality and psyche and to get them to turn vegan. Well, it's a vulnerable industry, too. I mean, I mean, certainly with, I mean, obviously there's a plethora of crabs and stuff that are available, but I mean, you know, you look at what the watermen are going through here in the Chesapeake Bay, you look at, you know, the costs that are going there. I mean, I know, uh, I'm not a big seafood, actually, I'm not a, any kind of a seafood eater, but I mean, you, know, you look at the cost of a bushel of crabs and what, what has gone. So, I mean, and if you get to a point where you're so far out of reach and not, I say you, not, not so much you, but I mean, if you get the crab industry where all of a sudden you're paying, you know, $30 for a crab cake sandwich, um, you're, you're pretty much out of business. So it's, it's vulnerable to a degree. And when you like, Exactly as you said, when you have somebody with multi millions of dollars to come down on you, every little bit happens. Well, it's hurts. a small industry too, and it, and it's with the ancillary industries, the crabbing industry. You're talking about watermen who go back generations. It depends on weather. It depends on nutrients, uh, pollution, um, populations, and the prices prices raise and fall. And then downstream of that, so to speak, are the restaurants. Yeah, and the which, price of crab meat is just increase steadily over the last few years and the consumers don't always understand why the crab cake sandwich is going up a dollar a year or two dollars a year but uh, it's very 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 difficult business to be in fuel uh, costs if the, yeah. it's it varies the cost i mean even with the the tariffs that are going down that's going to affect the cost of the uh, the pots uh, the crab pots and the water and the competition is 
it's just vast out there because let's face it, every restaurant in Maryland's got some version of a crab cake. You yeah, know? you so can't. It's not like being a steakhouse or or being a pizza place because even the pizza places and steakhouses do have a crab cake. So uh, you know we're always in competition with other people. Who yeah, Lunas and Annapolis has a damn good one. Yeah, I mean steakhouse. There's great. There's great crab cakes all over the place, and of course everybody's got their opinion of you know what their favorite one is, and it's just a lot of competition, like I said, and you know to have pizza come in and you know just really try and put another crippling blow in our industry you know that was when it was time to stand up and fight back who do you think's winning in, i saw in a Baltimore. comment today on uh, one of the barstool articles that said this is turning into a, a mike tyson fight from the 80s <laughs> <laughs> where you get the pay-per-view and it's round one yeah, and someone's lying on the canvas we're, we're doing the uh, conor mcgregor jose aldo uh, treatment to Peter right now. now did they reach out to you at all they did directly uh the first two times and then uh, yesterday, they released a statement uh, through WJZ, which is the top uh, news station here locally. So uh, I guess they're scared to uh, come at us again because of the amount of eyes that are watching the Jimmy's Twitter page right now. They know what would happen if you know they put their toes in that water again. How many followers do you pick up? Gosh, I've, I've uh, it's looked, amazing. Yeah, I've you you're over seventy right now. Seventy yeah, thousand yeah. through a. Uh... It's crazy. You know, uh, so I mean, this is, I mean, I, I get that anger and that, that indignation and when you get attacked and it's not just you, you're representing a lot of people from the restaurant industry to the service industry to the waterman, you know, to the company. Yeah, you know, my, you know, every, you know, 107 employees that we have here, they depend on us to open that set of doors every single morning. You have 107 morning. employees? We're over 100, you know, um, but, you know, they all... They all depend on us. We're not a seasonal place. You know, these people depend on us year round. Uh, so I mean, you, I mean, you're having fun to feed with their Twitter, families, you know. But I mean, there's 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 a lot that goes under the surface. That there's a lot of yeah, you know, it's, it might be funny on the surface, but below the surface, it's right. it's very serious business, man. It's uh, everybody you're looking at right now. They're all you know depending on us to help them feed their families every day. We have a notorious uh, Facebook group in Annapolis. It's uh, it's got like ten thousand followers, which is like a third of the city, and it's very active. And whenever someone gets what they perceive to be bad service or they have a they have a beef with a local business, they tend to light them up. And then everyone kind of either jumps on or defends them. And it's always this battle royale on there. And I've had some arguments with people going, you know, you're talking about a mom and pop. You're talking about people who are barely eking by and you're mm -hmm. going to jump in and, and fan these flames and before stepping back. And no one's coming after you at your work or your job. Yet you're putting these pressure on people for something that is absolutely minor. It's an industry where you're constantly, you're, you're out there. Uh, you know, there's nothing hidden. So people... They can attack you from a myriad of directions, uh, and uh, sadly, in our industry, uh, if you go to a restaurant and all ten things that you were looking for got checked off the list and it was perfect, you know, you're just going to go home and put on your list to go back to in three months. But if one little thing goes wrong, you know, if your soda didn't get refilled on time, you're going to go all over, you know, Facebook and Yelp and Twitter and blast it. And like you said, that's when the, um, you know, the pack mentality sets in, and everybody who has an opinion wants to chime in they don't even know the whole story you know maybe you never you never know what's going on so it's, it's a very difficult industry i equate it to a football team all the time and it takes 53 people on the same page to get that win every sunday and you talk to any nfl player they'll tell you how hard it is doesn't matter who you're playing that week to get a win and it's hard here whether it's a monday morning or a saturday night you know to pull off what we pull off and that's why i'm so proud i'm so defensive of you know my staff and our team I know one thing that you told me when we spoke on the phone, you said that your mater D was a little bit upset. It was going, you know, I don't know whether this is you know, a little old school. My brother as well. This is going to work. School. He's like, yeah, are we sure we're doing this? And so we got to, man. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, and the other night you're like, see. But you, but you, you what, tripled? Our, our followers, I think, went from 18,000 uh, to 70, I guess it's at now. And But even that but night. But I mean, you're, you're, the dinner served. The, the, oh, I would not tripled well, a lot, but it's definitely an increase. We're up like 30%. <laughs> Um, for Labor Day weekend, which, you know, traditionally in, in Baltimore is not a very busy weekend. Everybody goes down to the beach or they go on their last vacation or they're getting ready to take the kids back to school, getting ready for football season next week. And, you know, we just had hundreds of people coming in and just hugging us and uh, just patting us on the back and, you know, just uh, fist bumping us, shaking our hands. And they just expressed, you know, whether they were having a crab cake or just a soda or a beer, they were just here to support. I mean, was, Absolutely. Uh, well, it's, it's all Chris. about supporting local businesses, though. And I don't care whether it's in Annapolis or here, but I mean, commerce, I, I've, I've always believed, really be begins on Main Street. And whether that's Hollibird Avenue is here or Main Street in Annapolis or wherever it is, it's the local small businesses that are employing 107 people that are putting cash in pockets that are respending it throughout the city that's just so important and not the multinational corporations not the giant malls not the pitas of the world to do that and um i think i think it's just incredible that you've taken a stand as you have um i love your new billboard that you 
put up, and that was right around the stadium. I, I haven't seen it, but I've seen pictures of it, and that's um, a direct another blow to you know blow to Pedium. It says you know steam crabs here to stay, get famous, and it's obviously got your logo and a crab all covered up in mm. old bear J O. What's it? What's this? We actually make our own blend here. So secret? Neither. Neither of those. Yeah, you can buy it here. You can, and you can buy it on our website, but uh, that's our own blend. But to go back to what you were saying about everything beginning on Main Street and, in our case, Hollibert Avenue, you know, the restaurant business traditionally throughout American history has been the backbone of every community uh, throughout the, the land from, you know, here to Iowa to California to Hawaii. And, you know, we I feel like we do just as good, if not a better job than any restaurant uh, in, in America with giving back to our community. There's not a week that goes by where we don't do a charity event. I, I have hundreds of, of you know local charities. You know we're very actively involved with you know the Make a Wish Foundation. We have I a, saw the softball the softball. Yeah, thing we have a wiffle ball tournament next week for an actual rescue home for animals. The one where I uh, adopted my daughter from Aria. You know, just every week we're doing something for somebody locally. Uh, this past Sunday, we gave out 150 book bags of school supplies to kids from West oh, Baltimore. Really cool. We, we might put one tenth of what we actually do out there. We don't do it for the publicity. We do it because, like my father always told me, you know, the community gave him everything he has. And as a result of that, they gave me everything I had. It allowed me to go, you know, to private schools and to become educated. And it allowed me to become friends with so many people here locally. And it's just been a beautiful ride. And it's my duty, I feel, to give back. And, you know, there's every employee here gives back, uh, whether they're signing up for a Special Olympics event or, you know, so registering for our Make a Wish bowling event, volunteering at the animal shelter, you know that's that's part of your job here, and uh, it's a, it's not something that I have to force either because you know we set a pretty good example from the top. And I feel like that trip was down, and I think that's why people are so in love with Jimmy's and they feel like they're part of the brand and the fabric here because at some point or another they've probably seen us in the community and, and seen you know short of food's good but you know we're taking that next step and the step after that as well so you know if Peter puts us out of business you know that that's going to be a, a, a trickle down effect to thousands of people that we've been fortunate enough to help it really has i mean i i as i scrolled back through your twitter line for you know years uh you you can see that yeah we we did a, a make a wish event uh recently with uh, Roman Reigns from WWE, where he came here and he surprised a kid from Annapolis with a trip to WrestleMania. We did our draft party with Make a Wish, and we had the same child who called Martin Humphrey's name the year before that here, eating crabs with him. Look, we've done a lot, and it feels good, and it makes everything worth it. It makes the 18 hour days worth it, and it makes you know the constant badgering on Facebook to please come you know to this event and that event, and and you know looking for sponsors and. It just makes it all worth it when you see, you know, the magic that a restaurant can bring to a community because if that door is closed, you know, come Tuesday morning, that's not happening to those kids. It also makes it rewarding for the employees to come to work, rewarding for the customers to come in the door. In some small way, whether I buy a beer or, a, you know, having a wedding here, I'm, you know, in some small way contributing back to the local community there. What's your what's your tie in with Make a Wish? You've mentioned that four or five different times. Is there a special? Yeah, I just I just you know we work with many 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 charities. I just feel that it really is, and I it, I don't know if this is incorrect to say it's the best charity. You know, it's you see these kids that are just fighting, and they inspire me so much every time we do an event with them to just keep fighting, keep going, and just take that next step. And we sent out a tweet <laughs> back to Twitter. Uh, there was a picture of um how, the way it all started was. There was a picture of uh, Roman Reigns wearing a uh, a Jimmy Seafood shirt in the gym. So everybody is, oh look, Jimmy's they're wearing uh, they're wearing your brand. I said, cool. So I told the guys, I said, you know, put something out there for every like that the tweet gets, uh, we'll donate a dollar to Make a Wish. Do not tag him because <laughs> he has. We, 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 we need to pay payroll this week. Over a million followers, and they're okay, no problem. And it, it happened. You know, it got like six hundred, seven hundred, and then. Sometime that night, he must have got wind of it, and, and he retweeted, retweeted. it, uh, and it went up to 20-something thousand. Uh, I said, oh, boy, here we go. So, uh, you know, we, we slid by our word. Uh, we teamed up. with We, we reached out to make a wish from Atlantic, and we, uh, we raised the money, and we donated it to them. And as a result of that, we were able to uh, get linked in with the WWE, who um, found a local kid right. looking for a trip to WrestleMania. That was his wish. 
and it was great, man. We uh, he thought he was coming here for lunch, so you know we did get some authentic we, Baltimore crab cakes. Yeah, he, he we rolled out the red carpet for him, and we gave him the VIP treatment. Oh and man, he thought that's that cool. was it, you know. And then here he, here comes, you know, his favorite wrestler with a huge oversized ticket to WrestleMania. I have pictures over there of it. It's really cool, and uh, it was just amazing. It was uh, in forty four years. I've only been here for thirty five, but uh, you know, my entire life of working here. That was my favorite day in the history. Of How Jimmy's. big was your smile walking out the door? That uh, day, my, my arms were raised. <laughs> it was just like that. The love in that room yesterday. It was, I mean, that day rather. Well, it was uh, just amazing. And his family was just so kind as can be. Uh, veterans and they were actually from Severn, so close to you guys. And uh, you know, I, I saw pictures of him down at WrestleMania. Anytime somebody saw the kid, they would tag Jimmy's in the posts. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. You know, because it went pretty viral. That's so awesome. So they go look at you know it's trip. So they they uh, tagged Jimmy's and you know his smile and you know his it was awesome and then I know Roman met up with him down there as well so he got a second visit. That's neat. That's yeah. Neat. Well, you're doing something with uh, Make a Wish again right now. Yeah. So and, I'm gonna talk to John over there. Um, everybody wants to know who's behind the Jimmy's Twitter account. So <laughs> and I can verify that's not you because yeah. you haven't tweeted a damn thing. Since you've been here, so. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the reveal through Make a Wish. Uh, it's gonna be tied in. We'll raise a, a lot of money if people want to know. Uh, the person slash persons behind the account will have to uh, pony up for it and donate t- to our favorite charity. That's what uh, Carly Simon did with You're So Vain, that they auctioned off who the song was about. Yeah. that's uh, When When is the reveal, do you know? I talk, John over there is a, and Megan, they're, uh, we work with them real well. So we'll come up with a number and uh, we'll come up with a website they'll have to create and people can start donating. Got to strike while the iron's hot. And man, then, so. and then what? They'll each everybody will get a uh, a DM or something like that with a picture of the team with the names I'm or sure something. We'll do it, uh, it's a big public thing. We'll do it in a funny fashion, I'm sure. But you know, it's it's. I, I had to laugh this morning. You uh, <laughs> yeah, gave uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're at the image, yeah. hold no punches throughout the years, and it's <laughs> so John's holding an image of the the newscast this morning that was on on your Twitter account, and it's uh, it's a screen cap of of them reporting on the story and they jimmy says you'd think a local news station knows what a maryland blue crab looks like google images is hard <laughs> they're, like, they're like dungeon is crap yeah, yeah, I, I actually woke up to that and uh so whose idea was this and they were like, well you didn't say no i said i was sleeping you know <laughs> but they were right you didn't say no <laughs> by the way this is every social media manager's dream anyone who's in marketing where they're just given carte blanche to just say like you don't have to run anything by going is this okay we don't want to hurt or offend anyone you're just like go just do it they have we have guidelines. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> well, you, you, just, you just don't cuss. Basically. You go, you go up to the line, and you. you and, I told them sprint to the line, but don't cross it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, well, you, you came, you came close. There was one, and and we can cuss on here because that's uh, there was somebody that said basically, uh, uh, you guys are. I, I don't remember the exact name. Basically, you're whatever you know, get fucked. <laughs> and your response was. You should you should do those last two words? <laughs> there, was, there was that line. It was right there. Probably help you calm down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it's great when you give it back. I mean, there's some brands that will do it really well. Taco Bell does it pretty well. Wendy's, uh, Wendy's yeah. uh, as far as the fast food goes, and you guys have really taken Twitter by storm here in the city. Um, obviously, you've had a name before. As I look around here, look at uh, the pictures here. The you pictures got, are you got fifty feet of just. Everyone you could ever imagine just standing here posing. There's Tom Hanks over there. Yeah, RJ3 the was just here the other day. Yeah, yeah great guy. He's big, big dude. A yeah. bigger in person, yeah. He looks, uh, he looks small and skinny in, on TV, well, but in person, he's a big dude. He's well, the picture on your on your Twitter feed was interesting because I didn't know whether it was like a really, really tiny girl with him or whether he was that big. No, he's a big dude, and he was very happy that day. It was, uh, I guess when he found out he made the team, he was smiling ear to ear. He's a really nice guy. He's just yeah, he's been here a few times now, but I always treated everybody with a lot of respect. I'm, you know, I'm pulling for the guy personally. Cause anytime somebody I loved him. bounces back, you know, you got my respect. I'm a Redskins fan, so I was, I was a big fan of him. I mean, how many times have we seen athletes and anybody in the public eye in general just get knocked down the peg and never come back? You know, for him to battle through it is you know, uh-huh. a testament to his character. Well, I'll tell you, this is um, phenomenal. You're going to be at the um, Maryland Seafood Festival, which is coming up this weekend. You know, and yeah, we do. Uh, we enjoy that one a lot, actually. Um, I like traveling. I like to get you know further out of the immediate vicinity. Um, and what are your restaurants when you get out of town? Uh, Where are your go-to places? Gosh, you know, <laughs> or you just bring food with you from. I'm here. sure my girlfriend's gonna listen to this at some point, but yeah, I'm a big P.F. Chang's guy, man. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I love P.F. Chang, man. It's like, and my buddy, my best friend from Arizona, he's always making fun of me. Every time we're at P.F. Chang's or Cheesecake Factory, I always send him a picture. He's like, you know, you own a restaurant right. and you eat at these chains, like it's your job. 
Yeah, you know, I just uh, I'm a routine guy. I like I like doing the same thing all the time, and you know, I love Fiat Chang. I think the food's great. I don't care if it's a chain, and I think Cheesecake Factory is great. But you know, in my free time, I do frequent Annapolis a lot. Uh, they have you know a plethora of great options there. Yeah, we got some great restaurants down there. We always talk about that. We talk about Annapolis is small. Take the size of this bar, and we always said, you know, what restaurants? Like we know the restaurants that we would go to, drive to to Baltimore. This, of course, being top of the list and then going to dc what restaurants would you drive to there and we said annapolis for as small as we are do we have any we said there's probably two or three that you would, and then you can't the view can't count you can't say chart house because that's a shame. that's cheating you know yeah. uh what's the fox place sly fox yeah that's the they have really good the, pizza yeah, that's yeah really good. i go there and then uh, my buddy is a sous chef free right across the street uh, they had a restaurant. Reserve. The fox brothers had a restaurant. reserve yeah. yeah so my buddy brian's a sous chef there so we go there often as well we got that mix. I mean, downtown is so small that we got those mix of like the tourist restaurants that no locals would go to, but they're interspersed with it's a sushi really place, great tsunami restaurants. Yeah, yeah, I go there a lot. Yeah, they have great places there. He's um, our mayor now. He's our mayor. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've uh, never had a bad meal in Annapolis. Chart House as well. I've been there, and I enjoy the drive. Uh, I enjoy the scenery and the view. And I enjoy you know seeing the, the midshipmen walk around. And it's a cool spot. You know, hopefully I'll. Like I said, I'll be moving there soon, hopefully, and I just I can't say enough good things about Annapolis. Now, what about the other crab houses? Do you ever you go to any ones, or are you just like pretty much? There are other crab houses in Maryland. <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> I've actually never eaten a crab anywhere but here. In <laughs> now I grew up. Now here's a funny thing. So I grew up in Montgomery County with Bethesda Crab House, which was there, and that was iconic in Bethesda. And they were they were renowned not just for the crabs, but for their caustic attitudes. So they were just rude with everybody, and it was right in 95. Was it 95 where you had the Million Man Walk? Mm -hmm. And there was a group of African-American women who came in, and they moved them from one table to the other because they were crowded, and the women got upset, and they sued for racial discrimination, and their defense in court was, we're, we don't discriminate. We weren't rude to them because they were black, but we're rude to everybody because that's what we hate people. But, no. I mean, they were... I've just, I've just grew up on the taste here, so I'm scared to, you know have a different blend of seasoning somewhere else and you know now with social media i don't want somebody like snapping a picture of me right. somewhere else <laughs> right. i love right. you know right. jimmy right. Right. it's just crabs here so right i kind of you know just keep it here and you know I, I cook on myself and that's all i need i feel gouged when i go to like ocean city or somewhere like that because we're big crab people and i just feel like you know i'm paying 130 bucks for jumbos and they're mm. just number one I want to reserve comment on that one yeah i just <laughs> it's Hey, I'll tell you what, John, give us the rundown of, on the history of Jimmy's Famous Seafood here. I mean, I know we, we said it was your father started it. What, what's, what's the whole story? I mean, has, has the recipe changed over the years? Has, uh... No, we've kept everything the same from the beginning. No, that's, that's the constant. As the food's got to stay the same, the quality's got to stay the same. And uh, my brothers, you know, honored my father's traditions. How many brothers are there? Way. There's three of us. Uh -huh. uh, the middle brother, uh, he lives in Florida now. He started a family down there and. Uh, he's got two sons, and he lives there with his wife. Uh, so it's me and Tony here, and uh, you know he's kept all the same recipes, uh, no matter what the rise in cost means. So you know if if it means you're only going to make fifty cents on a crab cake, but you have to keep the recipe, you know you got to keep the, the recipe the same. Uh, 1974, like you said, my father opened the place. Uh, it was nowhere near as big as it is now physically. Uh, it was a bar carry out. And they had an outdoor garden at the time, which is no longer here. And then, uh, just as the, as he got busier and busier, he kept growing and growing. And, uh, when we were of age, we started working as well. And, you know, now we have the dining room, two bars, two catering halls to carry out. We have a meal prep service. Uh, we ship our crab cakes all over the country and we're just always looking to take that next step. You know, we're, we're young, we're hungry and we love working. You got how, many heads? how many crab cakes do you put out in a year? Do you know? Oh gosh, my brother would have that number, but you know, it's definitely hundreds of thousands, yeah. With three brothers, you guys bang heads a lot? No. No, yeah. we get along real well. We've, I, don't, I think we got into like one fight when we were kids, and it's vivid in our minds because that was like the only time it happened. But, you know, we're very close in age. And the and, pecking order was all established at that point. Yeah, you know, we all know what we're good at and what we're not good at. We don't, you know, we don't step on each other's toes. We don't fight. Is your dad still around? No, he passed away in 2003, no, no. actually. So it's been 15 years mm -hmm. uh, since we've been. At the helm. So you guys were young when you took yeah. over. Yeah, I was uh, 20. Oh, uh, Nick was 19 and Tony was 16 or 17 at the time. 
So we were kids, man. We were we thought we knew everything, but in fact, we knew nothing. So so in two thousand three, there was a sixteen year old, a nineteen year old, and a twenty year old running this yeah. running this place. Yeah, it's in, in hindsight, you couldn't even drink in your own place <laughs> legally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, it was unexpected. So uh, we weren't ready for it. But and there were dark days for sure. And you know, every day is still a learning lesson. But those days were certainly uh, big time lessons. And uh, you know, we survived. We made it. So how'd you come uh, through the recession? Uh, just, I mean, I know how you ended had, up, but was it like a lot of sleepless nights? Or is that yeah, just... man, there was uh, some nightmares. There was, uh, you know, BG trucks outside and trying to shut the power off. And yeah, I mean, bills beyond my eyesight, there was negative money in the bank account. Yeah. We, we both know a lot of restaurateurs and business owners and yeah. both in business. And just those between 2008 and probably 2015, it was just terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I've, I just I didn't know if this would you know be my end game. Always you know, you always think that it's going to be successful one day, but you just keep plugging away and plugging away. They say the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing every day and expect a different result. But I guess we're the exception to that rule because we just you know showed up to work every day, and at some point it broke through, and caught on. And- I have a friend of mine. He's uh, Sicilian, and he's uh, went to college with him, and his, he was raised in the restaurant industry. His his father owned several restaurants. And he's, he owned his first restaurant right out of college. And, and it's the sort of thing that he's in a restaurant like five years. He doesn't have a life. And he's there 20 hours a day and he's just sweating blood and everything. And then finally he sells it. And I'll call him like, yeah, how are you doing? He goes, life is great. I'm going to Aruba. This is fantastic. This is what I should have done a long time ago. And like six months later, I'll be like, so what are you up to? He's like, I'm buying another restaurant. And it happens every he's, time. He's like, he goes, I can't. Every time. Everybody that I've seen sell their place gets right back into he, it. He can't. It's in he, your blood. He said, I can't not do this. And he goes, the happiest day is when I, the same as a boat, the happiest day is when I buy my restaurant and when I sell my restaurant. Mm. And he goes, but then I can't not do it. You know, it's, um, how long has your oldest employee been here? I just had this conversation yesterday. He's been with me 20 years, 20 years. That sounded ominous. We had this yesterday. You've been with me 20 years. 20 years. Time. Yeah, we did the math. 20 years. Um, you know, but we've had multiple employees that have been here at least a decade. Uh, I always say if you make it through the first year, you're here for life because now you're part of the family. <laughs> now you can't leave. Right. It's like, and then, uh, good fellas, you know, you're locked in. Right. You're one of us now. Uh, and, you know, it's a big family. Everybody gets along real well. It's a beautiful place. I said that's your hostess because I came to the wrong place earlier before. And John texted me because I'm in the other bar. So your hostess whisked me through the kitchen. I'm like, this is right on Goodfellas. You know? I just, yeah. No, we uh, I should be high-fiving guys as I go through. Yeah, you know, we like to think of this place a little bit as people. a throwback. You know? yeah. it's, uh, you know, that's how it was in the 80s and 90s. And that's how we try to keep it. But you know what? And I will tell you this. There was a restaurant. Uh, what was it called? Northwoods that was in West Annapolis. Oh, yeah. And it was a revered restaurant. And when I went in, though, I'm just like, this is really kind of tired. I mean, the food was great. But it was something like... They should have redone it years ago. You come in here, and this is this looks has a classic look while looking contemporary at the same time. As ridiculous yeah, as that sounds, line. Like you don't want to get outdated at the same time. Exactly right. So, so you want to keep that old school feel, right? It's got that feel, but it doesn't have it doesn't feel like my grandparents' place. This exactly, is, it looks sharp. I, I I really like this. The the front bar is is open and airy and sunny. And then where we are right now, it's quieter. So we're in the back and it's darker. You got a piano here in the, the corner. The halls and the dining room. Yeah, every part of the restaurant's got its own feel. That's the, that's, I always compare this place to a Vegas casino because you can go to a casino in Vegas and get seven different experiences based on which entrance you go in. But same thing here. If you want, you know, upbeat and sports bar, you go over there. If you want to relax, have you know, a glass of wine and a crab cake, come over here. If you want to bring 20 guests in for a crab feast for your company, go upstairs and so on and so on. But there's something for everybody. There's plenty of parking, as you guys saw. But on the, I'm telling you, if, if the people listen from Annapolis, we got, I got up here in less than 30 minutes, came up, I mean, I was going like a bat out of hell, but I mean, I came up 97 through yeah, the Harbor Tunnel. Yeah, it's, it's Harbor, right off the Harbor Tunnel. Right outside of Harbor Tunnel. Yeah, it's like two lights and you're there. Yeah, and I got, so I'm going to bring my wife up here and kids, and then when I do, you got to come and like slap me on the back, big shot and everything, and then, uh, sure, man. yeah, you got to make me look good. Get you some like merch. <laughs> right, do, you, do, you, do you stand up for your steaks as good as you do your crab cakes? That's so funny. My brother pounds his chest when it comes to the steaks. He won't, he'll put our steaks up against anybody else's. And, you know, I, I obviously agree, but yeah, we, uh, we take a lot of pride in our steaks. Greeks and restaurants. Then, then I'm, then I'm, then I'm up here. <laughs> so, uh, what's the steakhouse in Annapolis? Lunes. 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 Yeah, it's our Greek owned. And it's my, my father, my father lives in Manhattan and he's a big steakhouse guy. He went to, uh, was the one they just shut down in Manhattan? Ben Benson's. And he said Lunas is his favorite restaurant yeah, in the world. Yeah, there's a steakhouse That's... up the street from them that I won't name. And I'm sure it, you know, they hurt them pretty, pretty well. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, once you have that Greek family pride, man, it's like you just want to put the best product out there. And that started off as a diner. That started off as just, I really? know a lot of the kids. Yeah, I know a lot of the kids who grew up who are my age and I'm in my late 40s. And they said, yeah, when we grew up, it was just a diner. You'd go in and then 
all of a sudden they went upscale. Yeah, but that place, uh, I like the feel in there. It's, it's here. phenomenal. It's very old school. And, and the employees who've been there, they've been there for mm-hmm. 20 years. We've been going there for 20 years, and it's the same yeah, employees. some good times in there, for sure. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. When you move down to Annapolis, that's going to be a go-to place. And my mom's adamantly against me moving to Annapolis. Ah. Like, it's the same as where I live now. I'm just going south instead of north. Relax. Yeah, and you know what? It's funny. For Annapolis, we say it's the heart of a crab country. There's, there's very few crab houses. Yeah. Very few. We got no. I don't know. I've been uh, been searching the area pretty well. No, it's and there's there's really none in the downtown. actual city. No, no. you got Mike's, none, which is none, on none. on Riva, and Cantlers, which is kind of touristy. Yeah, Mike, Mike's and Cantlers, which are Riva there. The Mike's point. North, the yeah. point. But in, in downtown Apples, you have buddies. But and then all due respect, that's that's a tourist place. You know, the locals don't yeah. go there. And we got we got pit boys now. They had thirty thirty dollar all you could eat the other night, but yeah. I don't know. I haven't checked them out yet. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to take up any more of your time, but. You guys are absolutely killing this yeah. Twitter thing. If anybody is not following, you need to follow Jimmy's Seafood at Twitter. Hashtag get famous. They got me back on um, for a brief temporary. And as, as Tim said, this is just a short drive up the road from Annapolis or actually probably down from Perry Hall or anywhere else up uh, Aberdeen, just down, um, just outside the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel and it's uh, Hollabird Avenue. It's about a mile off of 895, if that. Great place. I'm looking forward to coming back and getting a yep. steak and trying that out. And we'll be at the Seafood Festival. Yep, and this weekend at yeah. Sandy Point State Park. Are you going to bring the sass and bring the snark with you to the Seafood Festival or just for crab? i got to see uh, who's working. I'll look on the schedule. I'll send somebody uh, witty for sure. <laughs> <laughs> John Minadakis, thank you very much for your time today. Thank Congratulations. You. Good luck. Um, Thanks for fighting keep, a good fight. Keep it up. Keep it up, man. We're, we're uh, you know running on fumes. I got this energy drink here. but <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. I, th- I, th- I, think, I think you're winning. That's my vote. Yeah. Hi, right, John. Well, thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And there you have it. There's a guy who's at war with PETA, and he's having a good time while doing it. And frankly, I like to listen to all sides of a argument and try and be impartial. But I love my crabs, so shut up, PETA. Although I did kind of agree with the SeaWorld stuff a little bit. I didn't want to kind of point that out because that was a little over the line. But um, but as far as attacking local crab houses and a fragile industry like that, I'm firmly on John Minadox's side as is, I think, everyone else. So that was a lot of fun, so I hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, so you don't want to miss out on any more of our podcasts, you want to subscribe to our podcast on your podcast player of choice. Now, I think we say this a lot, and we never explain what that means. So a lot of us watch us on YouTube, or they click the play on our Facebook, or they go to our website at themarylandcrabs.com, and all things are great. But you have to make up your mind to do that, and sometimes in a busy world, you're going to forget how to do that. So we want to make sure you don't miss any of our episodes. So what you do is that if you have a podcast listener, on your phone, as they call them. So that could be Apple Podcasts or Google Play. So I use Downcast. There's a bunch of them. But when you go to the podcast and you search for them, the little box above the name will say subscribe. When you click on that box, that means that whenever a new episode is out, it'll be delivered automatically to your phone or to your iPad or whatever your device of choice is. And you can still listen to us on Alexa and Google Play. That's another great place to hear us. But you can find us on the web or at themarylandcrabs.com. You can email us at info at themarylandcrabs.com. We have a group and we have a page on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on every possible outlet that John could get us onto after I gave him the idea to do it and made him do all the work. And speaking of John, he's got a great podcast every weekday morning, which is called Ein Annapolis Daily Briefing. You want to subscribe to that, although I listen to it on my Alexa because his podcast is about eight minutes, which is exactly the amount of time it takes me to brush my teeth and get dressed and get out the door. It gives you all the news you need for the day. It's got the weather. Sometimes he rants. Sometimes he has a guest rant. It's it's a great podcast, and it actually is one of my favorites. I listen to it every day. So that's that. All right, folks, so we have some crab cakes coming up. And again, so if you subscribe to us, it'll be delivered to you automatically. But in the meantime, you're listening to Maryland Crabs, and thanks for joining us. Now go steam your crabs. This has been the Maryland Crabs podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home.